Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by the Cape Family Channel. Fred here, this is about take five, so. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been one of those mornings. Anyway, had a good question presented the other day. Someone wanted to know approximately what I paid for the Bounder and what I liked and disliked about it. Thought it was a great opportunity for a video. So while we're inside here, let's uh, let's walk around and, and I'll uh, give you a good little tour. So just to recap, this is a 2014 Bounder Classic 36R. So the front here, things I really liked about this were plenty of storage overhead. Probably number one. Um, plenty of compartments for everything. Uh, we got it loaded down. We do have all the AV equipment in here, which my daughter put games in here. But uh, AV equipment, plenty of storage. The only downside about the area is it gets hot in there. So I would not put anything in there that, uh, that could perish. Just remember that that area gets pretty warm. Uh, a little bit of storage over here. Uh, I keep all my camera gear up here and my tuners for the vehicles. Captain's chair area, uh, nice and roomy, no complaints there. One of my complaints that I did have here was the location of the stereo, which is also your, your rear view camera. I can't see it down here. So I actually went and bought a, I think this was a little five inch monitor and just mounted it here. It goes up under the dash here. There's a ground block that I grounded it to, and then I tied it into a fuse over here in the fuse box. The cable for the RCA input comes right off of the output of your unit here. So everything ties together really nice and neat on, up under there. It was a really in, easy install. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was, but well worth getting your rear view camera off of here so you can see it up here. My only complaint now with this is the glue that is used on here does not stick to the vinyl up here, whatever this material is. So I think I'm going to Velcro that. It's my next project because it just falls off while I'm traveling. Actually, you can see it's not even sticking now. So that's a to do. But I love having this up here. My recommendation is going bigger than five inch. I would get. Uh, Whatever's bigger than this. I love it, but it just needs to be bigger. Uh, other mods and things up here in the front. I added dual USB port outputs. Can't have enough of those, so I put one here. And I put one over there for the passenger side. Nice to have. The sub amp here was here when I bought the vehicle. So it just stays there. I'm not really uh, <laughs> into playing the music loud, but obviously the people that had this before me were, which isn't a big deal. And they mounted the sub under the seat here, under the, the front area. One of our biggest issues here was uh, the pleather that was on these flex steel chairs while we're here. These have all been redone. Uh, I do have some videos up on the before and after of this project. So uh, just go back and look for the flex steel and uh, upholstery videos. And I go over all this in detail. But that was about a $2,000, $2,300 investment. We ended up doing both the front chairs, plus, we did the sofa bed and the boot dinette. These are all brand new. That's all. That upholstery is all brand new. Because of the, the poor quality that we had on there. Everything was peeling. Everything. It was in really bad shape. So this is really nice. Uh, yeah, this has all been redone. We keep a cover on here. Because we do have some pets. We have a little Australian terrier that likes to jump up on there and sleep up there. So it just keeps the upholstery fresh. 
So we've got covers there. Overhead storage here. I've pretty much got it packed to the max. It's all my miscellaneous storage tools, some, some, some small tools, light bulbs, fixtures, miscellaneous wire. Of course, my happy camper. You know, anything that I may need, I just keep up in here. Readily available. Nice overhead storage here. Kitchen area. Overhead compartments here. Plenty of room for all your miscellaneous dry goods and things. Under cabinets. You know, plenty of room for a waste basket and cleaning supplies, that type of thing. Apologize for the messiness. We're still actively camping, so. Um, sink is a sink. If I move this stuff out of the way here. Uh, the faucet, one of the first things I did when we bought it was put in a new faucet. This had your typical RV faucet in it, the plasticky type of thing. So I put in a new faucet from Lowe's. Love it. It's the exact same model I had in my other camper. So that's always a nice upgrade. Moving on to the microwave, uh, standard microwave. This is a convection oven. I love having a convection, having the combo. I want to get one for the house. Because we do tend to use a convection oven to, instead of nuking things like pizzas and things, we use the oven. It's nice. Instead of firing up your, your propane. No, no problems here. Plenty of room for a Keurig. We'll keep that up here. I did mount a TV set. Uh, an LCD over here. So when we're traveling long distances, families in the booth dinette over over here you can watch TV over here we can stream because the entertainment center is not accessible when it slides in that was one of the downsides of this model was when it slides in you can't watch TV so I fixed that speaking of the entertainment center I upgraded the TV a little bit better model I put in the TCL which was highly rated on Amazon um, I love it. I've got a uh, fire stick mounted right behind it here. That's a 4K fire stick. So that works out real nice. This is actually a Roku TV, but I found that the fire stick has better um, Wi-Fi range than, a Roku, than the Roku built-in um, antenna. So I like uh, just using the fire stick, a little better range on that. Put in the Polk soundbar much needed upgrade the um no matter what tv we had on there the other one or this tcl when you're sitting over at the captain's chairs you can't really hear what's what's on the tv so soundbar fixes that issue and it's not super loud it just has a lot a lot more range and sounds a little bit better storage underneath keep all of our miscellaneous cables flashlights you know it's a junk drawer basically storage underneath we've got pull out pull out units keep all of our dry goods under here it's a big Tupperware slide and bin same thing with the other side so lots of storage there table obviously converts to a bed pretty easily um, I didn't didn't mention but the sofa does pop out to a bed it's about a full size oh I don't know double maybe double bed it's not a queen but that's where my daughter sleeps while we're camping it's easily pulled out we have a mattress with throw on it she's there and it works out really nice one thing about this model is you do have the storage over here plenty of room for our pots and pans and things uh, overhead here plates refrigerator I think this is the eight foot eight cubic foot fridge <laughs> not much in there because we just got back from camping but it's nice having that larger fridge not the uh, the standard uh, the medic that comes in I think it's the what six six or seven cubic feet this is a larger one 
panel down here is access to your fuses. Be honest, I haven't been in here in a long time. Oh, no fuses there. They're all up front. This is just your breakers. Pantry space. Would've been nice to have a pull-out pantry instead of just, you know, shelving units. Can't see what's in the back. If it was pull-out, that'd be an awesome upgrade. Linen closets. Plenty of room in here for your linens. We use it also for larger pots. And some more cupboard space down here. It's for my daughter's clothes. That's all of her stuff there. So plenty, plenty of cupboard space in here. This here is the half bath. Half bath unit here. No real problems here. Um, it's nice having, it is really nice having a half bath. I will say it is nice having that extra half bath. Come in the front door, got to go to the bathroom. Here you go, kids. Don't go through the back. Stay out. <laughs> Coming into the back bedrooms. This is a king size bed and storage, obviously. So king size bed is nice. We keep all of our spare mattresses up here. This is a four inch, maybe maybe four or six inch foam mattress that we put on my daughter's bed out there. We throw that on every night for her. Another mattress here is for the uh, the other bed out there, the uh, booth dinette. We have another mattress for that. So all these are stored back here along with all of the, you know, we just throw everything back here as you can see. Storage overhead here, probably more for linen space or whatever you want to do. As you can see, I've got fans up here and extra blankets in case it gets cold. So it's really nice back here, pretty big space. Across from this is, uh, we use it for storage, but there was a, uh, a mirrored door on this closet. We decided that that was really in our way. And we use it for more storage. This right here is another fold-out mattress that we use when more company is here. So plenty of room for pretty much anything, you know, sweepers, whatever you need. You can throw it. Through. It just opens up that whole area if you take that door off. So I guess you know, if, when it comes to time to sell it, you can always throw that door back on. It's pretty easy to do. Across from that's a little TV. I can honestly say we've never used it. We don't watch TV in here. So it's there if you need it. I was actually thinking about the t taking the TV out and just using that for more storage. Put another shelf there. And moving on to the back. Last thing is the bathroom, which I love. So cupboard space here when you first walk in for all of your towels, washcloths. It's right inside the door, sliding door for privacy. This is pretty much a bathroom for two or for one big dude like me. I absolutely love this shower. I can get in there and turn around without any problems. Upgraded to a, oh, Oxygenetics. I almost forgot the name of it. Also, we upgraded the faucet because the kids were having problems with those standard RV uh, two knob faucets. We could never get it to to not scald you, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So, upgraded this to this style faucet. Works wonders. Love it. If I turn around here, we've got the rest of it here. <laughs> if I jump in here, plenty of counter space in here for putting items out on. Love it. When you have a wife and a daughter, that is just packed with their stuff. So, plenty of space for them. The toilet back here is a vacuum flush. Um, some people love them, some people hate them. I love it. I love that vacuum flush. The only issue we've ever had with it was one of the first trips out in it, we got it clogged. And that was because there was too much toilet paper in it. So now the rule of thumb is flush more, use lots of water, and use less toilet paper. Never had a problem. Works wonders. I love it. Really, the nice thing about it is you can fill it up with water by just tapping the 
tapping the flush valve up, which the other one does not do. I guess another upgrade here is adding plenty of space to hang your hang your miscellaneous items, clothes, um, drying towels. So we added all of these here. Works great. Thing you got to watch though is this wallpaper comes off kind of easy. As you can see here from the steam in here, if you don't have the fan on, this wallpaper comes off easy. And I found that if it comes off in here, when we try to hang some other hooks in here, this wallpaper is peeling off. We lost one right here because of it. So I don't know how I'm going to stick that back on. But that's the inside. Very functional. Everything's well built, solid. Um, really, no complaints. I, uh, it is the Bounder Classic, so it's not the upgraded. So it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have the one piece counter space. Um, you know, nothing fancy, but it's totally functional. We didn't need any of the fancy gadgets. And we didn't need that extra $50,000 price tag or whatever it is. So, all right, let's go outside. All right. Let's go to the front. Sunny out. All right, out front. Love the one-piece windshield. No bar down the center, one piece. Um, you can see everything, real nice. There's one thing about this. Uh, this does have a Dura Shield, so it's got the invisible bra on it. it. Does a good job. The only problem is you can't clean it. So if you're going through areas with bugs, um, it's literally impossible to get the bugs off of them. And I asked a couple of the detailers around here um, how they get bugs off of cars with the Invisibra on them. And they said if you don't get them right away, the acids can actually kind of go right into the, into the plastic. So this is the way this was when we bought it. I have tried many times to get these bugs out of this this plastic coating and it, it's just etched in there. So just something to be aware of if you go through an area with bugs Try to get it washed down as soon as you get to a campsite or your next destination. Try to get the bugs off. The only thing I haven't tried is like a, uh, a polisher. You know, like a dual action polisher for detailing, but I think it would just take the plastic off. So that's my only complaint about the front. Actually, there's another complaint. I had a, uh, a lock go bad on me. I put the key in one time, turned it, and nothing was given. So I took the lock off, and there's a little retaining screw in there that broke. So I've got to get up to Camping World one of these days. Get a replacement. Inside, everything's pretty easily accessible. Um, battery maintenance is a breeze. The only issue is getting up to that oil. Getting a, a little cork container in there is challenging and I have spilled some oil and then I looked online and someone said pretty much the easy way to do it is to go back to your college days and make a bong a beer bong you know run a hose into here and then have a hose that runs up to here with your uh, funnel on it and pour the oil in that way so next spring when I change oil I'll make myself a beer bong it's just going to be an oil bong. Everything else is good though. Uh, you can check everything. Yep, everything's easily checkable. It's the only issue. Walk around the outside. We've got tire covers on. Uh, I don't think I can show you here. We'll get to it when we get to the back seat. Or the back wheels here. Uh, first compartment generator 
thing runs like a champ. Changing oil is a piece of cake, but you have to get up underneath it. Uh, I've changed it a couple times now. Where's the uh, drain plugs right there? Drain plugs there, as well as the oil filter. Everything's easily accessible, so maintenance is easy. Let me get up without hitting my head. So that's the generator. All these compartments here are storage. Plenty of storage. This one actually is passed through. So you can't see on the other side, but this is a pass through container. This is pass through. This one here is not, but I keep all my wood in there. This here is propane, which I have upgraded to accept 20 pound propane. I have a video on that. So this is actually full. I keep it topped off. Um, I don't use it. I use it just for travel. Um, anytime I get to a destination, I just hook up my, pro my 20 pounders because I can get 20 pounders filled anywhere around here. The only place I can get this filled is Camping World, which is 20 minutes, 20 minutes away and the drive can be um, not quite as desirable as I would like during rush hour. So I just use 20 pounders. In my area, it's just a lot easier to get them filled. Back here, I wanted to show you the Sumo Springs. Um, and I can, they're back here. So we upgraded to Sumo Springs in here. Hopefully that got a shot of it. But that made a difference. That helped a lot. No, it's not as nice as a diesel with the airbags, but Sumo Springs did make a difference in the way this thing handles. This bay, um, issues. <laughs> I've got a lot of issues with this bay, to be honest with you. This thing was not designed right at all. As they say, the engineers that do these never camped in their life, and I can guarantee the engineers that were working on this wet dry bay never camped. So we've got our sewer here. All right. No issues with that. It goes straight down the hole. But this compartment right here is where you store your power cable. So this big old 50 inch cable has to be coiled right up under there every time. That is a royal pain. Royal pain. Next, you have city hookup and the sandy flush. This here, I have to spin this because I put my water filter off to the side here because I, I mount my water filter right here. So I can never go straight down because the water filter is going to hang down way down here and your water has to come out here or your water has to go out that hole. This needs to be a lot higher somewhere. Sandy flush is okay. Um, that works good. Never had any problems with sandy flush. Um, this isn't for everybody, but this is where we mounted the surge guard or the surge protector. This is the EMS unit from um, Progressive Industries. Yes. Love it. That works wonders. I would recommend that in any RV. Any RV. Get the EMS unit. Um, I did have to put in a bracket up here to hold the cable because the brackets that were in here from General RV that they installed it broke. So I upgraded to a much larger bracket up there to hold that cable up. But this this bay in here is just... And I wouldn't... To be honest, I would never put your fresh water in with your sewer. That's another one that just baffles me. But my biggest complaint is that cable wrapping up under there. There's got to be a better way to do it. More storage. This is all my sewer. Another pass through. Pass through here as well. All my fresh water components. 
Store my propane tanks back here. More pass-through storage. See a lot of pass-through storage. Gas fill up is on the back. It's on the side. Yeah. The only comment I have about the towing is this hitch is pretty high off the ground. That's my only complaint. So if you're going to tow a vehicle behind here, you're probably going to need to get an extender that is a drop hitch. Because that is pretty high off the ground. Anything off the back? Any comments? Nope. More storage. As you can see, path through. I've got tables and everything in here. I mean, there's there's a lot of storage in here. A lot of storage. You can see all my goodies. So you might be able to see my sumo spring a little better on this side. Yep, there we go. So sumo springs, all four, front and back. Down here, hot water tank. It would have been nice to have a 10 gallon. I'll give you that one. This is a six. It would always be nice to have that 10. So that's one thing you probably would get in a regular bounder, but you're not going to have it in the bounder classic. Back of your refrigerator here, refrigerator vent, fresh water fill. <laughs> there you go. Um, Halloween decorations plus anything else in here. There is a uh, water filter. And one of my complaints in here is to drain the freshwater tank. You have to reach up and there's a valve way up in here. They could have probably located that a little better for us. Because it would be ideal just to not have this panel here. Which I'm probably going to take out. I just can't reach that valve. Too hard to do. So I'm probably going to cut that panel off. Or just pop it out. It probably just pops out. Well, actually, yeah, it's screwed in, I think. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it was screwed in. I'll have to tinker with that. But, yep, yeah, Halloween decorations. Here. Oh, beer storage. Yep, beer storage. <laughs> And last compartment. This is all passed through. Good place to mount your fishing equipment. Things like that. That's it. So all in all, love the unit. Love it. A couple of things I would change. And I wish they would give you good upholstery. That would be my, my biggest complaint was the upholstery. It's just, uh, that was a mess. That was a mess. But to anyone who's still watching, thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping by and viewing. Hopefully you got a little information out of this video. And have a good day.